from my website. So would you take some pictures of me if you have them? And you can tweet me or just grab me and shoot me. That'd be cool. Um, my talk is so you don't have a business card. And I this out of a little bit of frustration with my fellow WordPress brethren and sisterin. Because I'd come to WordCamps or I'd go out networking and meet somebody who's really interesting. Got to fix one thing? I don't know if we can hear me now. Cool. Well, I can start again from the beginning, which is cool. No, I'm going to start from the beginning. <laughs> well, I'm Ray Mitchell, and this, as I was saying, the talk is something that came out naturally because I meet with a lot of WordPress people. This is not my first WordCamp, but Raleigh is the first WordCamp city that I ever attended. Um, and I was just so excited about meeting so many people using this tool and this platform to build their business and do so many different things that you want to keep in touch with them. And I always ask for, do you have a business card? And invariably, more than half of the people will go, no, I don't have any, or I don't use business cards. I, I don't. And it always perplexed me because I fancied myself kind of, or I've kind of grown into being a networker uh, over the years. So I'll talk a little bit more about that journey and why this business card thing is kind of important for us, particularly if we're freelancers or small agencies or anybody who relies on other people to bring us business. So a little bit more about me. Uh, in the summer of 2010, I started 6.4 Web Design. I decided all of a sudden, because of another business that failed, I needed to do something different. I had a consulting business. I did leadership training and development for small businesses. I figured I was going to start this business. I had a whole lot of corporate experience, and I was going to go out on my own and start a training business. Unfortunately, it was 2009, in the middle of a recession, and nobody wanted to pay for training. Well, in 2008, where I was thinking about starting this business, I built a fancy website for myself because I didn't want to pay for one. Everybody asked me where I'd got this website for my business, but no one wanted to do business with me. So I figured I'd start doing web design as a business. So that's how I started 6.4 Web in uh, 2010. Uh, Made for You is another brand that I started very recently. Um, last summer, things go on in the summer, uh, to also do web design for, for smaller clients. So as we talk about this presentation, uh, the title definitely was clickbait, uh, because I'm not really going to talk too much about business cards. So if you're a print designer, hoping to be in your glory, typography nerd, Maybe next year. Um, so I talked about my journey into becoming a networker and, and doing networking. I was an anti-networker. Before I started the consulting business, I, I spent about 20 years at American Express in operations. Um, and there was one guy in my team that was always in net networking. Where, where, for lack of a better name, or not to use his real name, where's Joe? Oh, he's out networking. Well, Joe's a slacker. Joe doesn't half get his work done. He doesn't manage his people well. Why is he always out networking? Um, finally, Joe had to leave American Express because he wasn't doing his job as effectively as he should have. But Joe landed a cushy job three levels up as a vice president as virtue of his networking. So I said, maybe there's something to it. And as I kind of look back on it, I was networking in the company. Didn't call it networking, but I was the guy that if you wanted something done, if you wanted to know how to do something, you'd call me. Because either I could do it, or I can tell you who could do it. And point you to the right person to get whatever task you needed to be done, done. It was a skill that I cultivated, knowing who's out there, who's doing what being good at my job, knowing what I was going to do. And I would help people, as, you know, send me an email, Ray, do you know who can do this? Or Ray, can you do this? And I'd always find an answer. It was networking, but I didn't know it was networking. Fast forward a little bit, I left American Express, started this consulting company, and literally, I moved from slacker and schmoozer to someone who had to go network. Um, that was the point where I entered my uh, 
grip and grin phase. Hi, I'm Ray Mitchell, and I'd give out business cards. Call me if you need me. And I'd give business cards, and it got to be where you'd go out to these networking events, Chamber of Commerce is having something, and I'd bring a stack of cards and throw them out like they were uh, making it rain at a <laughs> club of ill repute, right? But as a networker, or as an inexperienced networker, that was what you're supposed to do. You give people your card, and then magically you get business after they have your card. It doesn't always work out like that. And those of you who have been in business for a little bit and freelance for a little bit know it takes a little bit of work actually to cultivate business. It takes a lot of time. I didn't know that because working at a big company, I didn't have to network. My, my check came every other week in direct deposit. Everything was cool. Somebody asked me a question, I'd answer it. And if I didn't answer it, the check would still come in two weeks. But when you're working for yourself, you're working for a smaller business, you've actually had to go out and generate this business. You've actually had to go cultivate it. I got frustrated at this process. I built this fancy website. I knew the technical pieces of my consulting work, but I wasn't getting work. So there must have been something wrong with it. So I'd go back to my office and work on it, polish the website, build another training package. You know, maybe the design on this flyer is not right. Maybe I need to do that. And fortunately, I had a guy who saved my life from a networking perspective, and I owe him a lot. He called me to go to one more event at the Chamber of Commerce. And I just got frustrated and I blew up at him. Chris, I don't have time for any more of this networking. I gotta work, I'm working. And he kind of calmly just told me about what I needed to do. And he effectively said, Raymond, networking is the work. If you think about it as a small business person, the only way that you're going to get it out, because you don't have the multi-million dollar budget to run ads on television. You can't necessarily afford to put one of those digital billboards on the highway. The way you get out is really one-on-one, -on -one, letting people know what you do, how you can serve them, how you can fill their need. Um, it's kind of embarrassing for somebody who professes to be a web designer. But over the years, the majority of the work that I get does not come from my website. And those of you who've been doing this for a little bit, you know, you probably realize that as well. It comes from the interactions that you get with people. You tell them how you can solve their problem, their website issue, and they see your previous work and they may contract you to do that work. Or people in town know your reputation for doing good work, for being fair, for being on time, having quality, having a standard and they refer you to someone else who needs work. And that's where the work comes from. So in that statement that Chris made, I went from net, uh, networking skeptic or networking heretic to networking evangelist. Because I could see how important it was. And it was a skill that you don't really learn in the corporate environment. Because your check comes every two weeks. You do your little task and you get a check. When you have to go out and actually do it yourself, it, it becomes important. And I realized that. And I told everybody I left behind at the corporate world, hey, you need to start doing this network. You need to start going out. You need to start making connections outside the walls. Because once you get outside, it's pretty cold. You don't have that built-in network that can help you do things. So I talk about this networking. I don't know how many of you are active networkers, but the question is, you know, what is the purpose of networking? The purpose of networking really is just to build and forge relationships, right? Um, networking is building. Um, a woman that I network with uses a statement that's pretty similar to this, and she talks about networking is you either spend time building relationships, you spend time building your knowledge, or you spend time networking building your bank balance, making money. And those are the three reasons to network. You want to build relationships with people in the community, people who can use your services, people who don't necessarily use your services, but just need to know about you and what you do. And it's not just about you. You need, if you're a good networker, to know about them, to be able to reach out and get resources, resources that cover things that you don't necessarily do. 
from a knowledge perspective, networking provides an opportunity for learning. WordCamp is a great learning experience. Um, for those of you who this is your first WordCamp, it's probably overwhelming with all of the knowledge that you're getting in. For those of you who have been to more than one WordCamp, you're back because of all the knowledge that you've got and all the relationships that you've built. So net networking adds a lot of value to your life and can add a lot of value to your business. And of course, you network to build your bank balance, right? You're out seeking balance. You're, you're, at, you're actively seeking business. And one way to do that is to let people know about your, uh, your business endeavor and what you do and how you can solve problems that make you money. All right, so I use the phrase networking, but it's not really networking. It's really the process of building relationships. Because if you can actually build a real relationship with people, they trust you, they know your character, over time they learn your ability, and, th and they're willing to refer you work or make an introduction that could make a positive change in your business. So networking does not have to be a fixed kind of meeting that you go to every week. It can be, but there are a lot of other places and a lot of other ways that you can network. Um, there are business networking groups. You may have heard people refer to BNI or leads groups. Um, Chamber of Commerce events, if you're a member of the Chamber of Commerce, that's a great place to be if you're in business because Chambers of Commerce typically are made up of business people. And you have a little extra credibility as a member of that chamber speaking to someone else who's a member of that chamber, and that helps grease the skids for building a relationship, right? You can network in your Uber. I do a lot of that, because I ask people what they do. Is this your full-time job? No. Well, yeah, we talk about it. What do you do? Well, I work with small businesses and nonprofits to, to build them websites, and we talk about that. I give them my card. A lot of times, they are not working at their dream job. They're Ubering, and it's an opportunity for them to use my network to get introductions to people who can help them in their career. So networking really is kind of a two-way thing. It provides an opportunity for you to build a relationship for the future that is mutually beneficial. Um, grand openings of new businesses, ribbon cuttings. It's a great place to meet other people who are interested in business, who are also interested in their community and potentially interested in doing business with people from their own community. That's one way to go out and shake a hand. Not in the grin and grip and throw business cards out, but to meet some new people. And if you make it part of your regular routine to be involved in your community, you will see people who are also involved in the community. And they will recognize that you're involved in your community. They'll want to get to know who this person is that they always see in the community. And that's where you build a relationship. Conferences like WordCamp or Converge South or Internet Summit, you get to meet people in your industry. The people in your industry are potential referral sources. Civic groups like Rotary or Kiwanis, your church, there's an opportunity for you to see, be seen, to meet and talk about what you do. And that is a way of promoting your business through networking. Little League or soccer games, if you're not actually playing, you're sitting in the stands with parents. You know their kids, they know your kids. Maybe you can get to know each other. Build a relationship. Because through the relationships, and it said, people do business with people that they know, they like, and they trust. The way to get known, to be liked, and to be trusted is to be consistent and be out in the public at all times. So when you're networking, you've got to have a way to talk about yourself and your business, right? Uh, depending on your view and where that comes, well, you've heard, you know, the picture is, you know, the elevator switch. They talk about the, the elevator pitch, the elevator speech. I typically talk about the 30-second commercial because you want to get good at being able to talk about your business in a short time. Uh, to be able to give a concise description of what you do, so you can explain when you're sitting next to someone in the, in the Uber or sitting next to a parent at the soccer game or at the Y, you can talk about your business effectively. Typically, you're going to let them know 
what you do, who you do it for, and the type of businesses that you work with or who you'd like to do work with. Um, you want to do it in a way that is compelling and creates interest, right? So if you compare and contrast the way you say this, you know, kind of appropriate for work camp, well, Rich, what do you do? If Rich responds, I'm a web designer, oh, everybody knows what a web designer is. I don't need to be interested in that anymore. I can turn my head, I can get popcorn, I can do something else. But if Rich says, hey, I'm not just a web designer, but you know, I own a business that I help small businesses, they become more effective, and they get a presence online that helps them win more business. That's a different statement. You know, if you're not on the design side and maybe you're a developer, you know, I work to build reliable platforms that business owners get that maximize their business. Again, that's something interesting. Well, tell me a little bit more about what you do. You build a platform. You know, is that a box or is it software? gives an opportunity to, a to answer the question and engage them, to actually get a little bit more curiosity about what you're doing, and you can reel them in and talk a little bit more about your business. Um, if you go to networking events, probably the most, I won't say you hate it, but everybody sees the financial advisor coming, right? Or everybody sees the insurance agent. You know what they do. You don't necessarily want to have that conversation, right? As soon as they say you're a financial advisor, oh God, he's going he's to ask me to make an appointment. Let's get together for coffee so we can talk about my insurance. Right? Um, if you talk about how you protect families' wealth or how you ensure that if there's a crisis that everything doesn't fall apart, well, how do you do that? Well, I help people by fully funding their retirement through life insurance or something like that. It, it forces the second question. And through that second question, it gives you an opportunity to distinguish yourself in their mind enough that they might actually be interested in talking to you a little bit more. With that 30-second commercial, the goal really is to get the person that you're talking to to say, well, well how do you do that? If you can pique their curiosity enough to get them to say, well, how do you do that? Now you can really talk about how you solve problems and who a good referral partner is, because not everybody you speak to is in need of your services, but they likely know somebody who could use them. And if you can explain how and why you do what you do, it's more likely that you'll get a referral. Okay, so in the, in the networking environment, here's a little tip. The first person who gets to say, so, what do you do? They're the winner, and it's not a competition. But they're the winner because it allows you to kind of frame your 30-second commercial in the context of what they say. If they say, I'm a small business owner, you can kind of quietly, but not, in sm not smile too broadly, but start going like this, if you market as uh, small business owners. Because now you can talk about how, how well you serve small businesses. If they're a big corporation, you can still smile and go like this, but now you frame your 30-second commercial as, we help larger businesses achieve these goals. Right? By having that little bit of information, you can be more specific about how you solve the need for people like the person you're speaking with. Right? Networking is kind of an interesting thing, and, and a lot of times when you go to a networking event, it's, it's kind of strange, and people have different skill at networking. You'll run into people who you meet, hey, how are you doing, what do you, what do you do? And they vomit on you. They literally tell you everything they possibly do, every service that they have, every customer they have, every solution that they have, whether you're in the market for it or not. If networking is about building relationship and working with it, there's no need to actually go through this process and you know, just cover them with everything you do. If, you're an established, if you have the intention of being an established networker, you're around for the long haul. And if that's the case, treat the conversation like you're going to come back and speak to them again, like you expect to see them in an event again, because you're working to build a long-term relationship, a relationship built on credibility and stability. If you're hit and run, you're just, again, making it rain with business cards, you know, people don't think you're going to be around. They don't take you as seriously. 
um, I was talking to my wife because I saw an article on, maybe on uh, NPR's website or something like that. They're talking about building friendships. And networking kind of is the same way in terms of repetition. They say in order to actually build a friendship versus acquaintances, you have to spend 90 hours with someone doing the same thing. And it's not necessarily you're both doing the same thing, you're not bicycling or something else. But, you know, if you have a cup of coffee together, after you have 90 hours worth of coffee, you probably have a good relationship, right? If you are volunteering together in an organization, I'm a Rotarian. Uh, a lot of people join Rotary thinking they're going to get business. Um, those people who come exclusively for business, they usually hit the door and then head right back out. But if you work together with people who are volunteering for 90 hours, you get to know a little bit something about people. You understand their character. You understand what they're interested in. You understand a little bit about their family, who, how they operate. You see them in action because you're watching them when they're doing other things and you get to understand them. So as a network, if you make the assumption that you're building a relationship over time, it's all right if you don't get business the first time. It's all right if you don't get a referral the first time. It's all right if you don't spend more than a minute talking to each other. It's the over time building the relationship that makes sense. So, I talked a little bit about the elevator speech. I really believe in helping people with networking. I talked about my networking evangelism. I talked about my debt to Chris, who shook me on networking. If you need help or want to work on your 30-second commercial or your elevator pitch, visit that website, and I will work with you on helping you build your 30-second commercial. No charge, no obligation. That's my give back to people who have helped me. Right? Once you've gotten past that 30-second commercial, and you're actually sitting next to somebody or talking at an event, you may ask. <laughs> 30secondsecret.com. So what, what do you talk about when you're sitting with somebody? I mean, if you're an introvert, it may not be your natural thing. I really don't accept that fully, because if you're in business and you need to go talk to people, you can be an introvert when you go home. But when you're out, you got to be out, right? So, what do you talk about? You could talk about cars, but I would encourage you to talk Ford, right? Ford is an acronym. It's kind of easy to remember how you can actually start a conversation. You don't need to use every letter in the Ford, but if you use those things, it is an opportunity to talk. It's an opportunity to get to know somebody. And over time, you may get through all four, depending on how long your conversation is. But it's very easy, depending on the circumstance, if you're at the Little League, oh, that, is that your kid out there? Yeah, that's my son. Oh, my daughter's over here. And that at least gives you the icebreaker to get into the conversation. You're not always going to start out talking about family. But you may talk about you know, what you do, or, hey, so what do, you, what do you do for hobbies? What do you do that's exciting here in Raleigh? You know, that recreation is potentially the icebreaker. Um, there's two of these acronyms. There's FORD and FORM. FORM is actually probably a little bit more business appropriate. Um, and when I say business appropriate, once you start to get a relationship with somebody from a business perspective, and you're actually having that one-on-one -on -one meeting afterward, form probably, form, F-O-R-M works a little bit. It's family, give me details about your occupation in specific, still recreation, but what's your message? What's the message I should go away with about your company, which is the who you want to work with? What types of businesses that you support? Because at that point, you've probably established kind of a relationship for business, and you have the, the real intention to try and give this person some support from a business perspective. So understanding their message and being able to repeat that effectively helps you look credible when you're talking to one of your clients about this other guy who can actually solve their problem. Right? So remember the acronym FORD. 
you don't have to, you know, it's good if you have a couple of questions in each of the categories, so you don't have to wear the same question out. And if you have a couple of questions related to family or occupation, um, it makes it a little bit easier and makes it sound a little bit more natural. One of the things I learned uh, about networking at WordCamp, and you, you may have already heard this phrase or you probably will hear this phrase, but it is the icebreaker question for our little group. It's, so, what do you do with WordPress? Has anybody heard that today or in this trip? One at the back, Sharon knows that. But it's a very common question, and it's actually good for us as a crutch where we don't necessarily like to network as much. Everybody kind of has this interest, and the question is easily understandable. Well, I build sites. I'm a dev. I've never used WordPress before. Everybody can answer that question, and it immediately allows you to get pulled into the community. So, at Donuts and Networking tomorrow, please ask the question. So, what do you do with WordPress? So, we have the acronym FORD. Um, there's another acronym that we are going to not use in our networking pursuits. Um, it would be very impolite if I went up and burped at you. All right. When you're networking, please don't burp. All right. Stay away from bad jokes. That's going to be hard for Corey, who's a comedian. But stay away from bad jokes. I'm not saying your jokes are bad. But if they were bad, you shouldn't do them in a networking event. Oh, now she's leaving me. All right. Um, uncomfortable childhood uh, experiences. You know, yeah, you know, and it's kind of there jokingly, but realistically, how many times do you meet somebody new and you're whining and pissing and moaning about something? It's not an effective networking tool to be a downer, right? And of course, the last two that we're familiar with, don't get into a, a deep conversation in religion and politics. You can, but you take a risk, right? So, right. Uh, networking is is a two-way street. I said it's value for both parties. Um, I'm not a big proponent of BNI, but Dr. Ivan Meisner is the founder of BNI, and he stated that, uh, and the principle that they operate under is giver's gain, and I really truly do believe that. If you're always trying to do for yourself and you're networking with the intention of helping yourself only, you're not going to prosper. People will, people will back away from you. They will see you see how transparent you are in your attempts and keep their distance. But if you actually give and people see you as a giver and they know that you're a connector and you go out of your way to introduce the new person that's standing in the corner by themselves to someone else and you bring them into the group, they will see that and you'll gain from that. If you're free with giving referrals, you get known as somebody who gives good referrals and people reciprocate. Givers gain. It's easy to give. When you're networking, it's not about you. And it's easy to, it's easy. If you have that spirit, if you have that heart for networking, it's easy. What can you do to help this, uh, this other person? Is there an article or a resource that you can give them that would help them in their job or help them to find more clients? Is there someone that you know that this person just needs to meet? Once you start getting in the WordPress community a little bit more, you will find that you can make a lot of connections. And there are people that you want to introduce to each other because it would be good for them to get together. It'd be good for both of them if they knew each other. You can be that connector. Is the person you're talking to a good resource for your clients? If they are, it makes you look good if you bring them a good resource. Are they a good resource for your family? If you see that this person is reliable and trusted, wouldn't you want your family members to take advantage of that? That's a benefit. And it gives this person business. Is the person you're talking with a good partner for your business? Is, is there a potential relationship that you can gift them your business? You know, to be able to turn that over because it, it builds your business and it builds their business. When you meet somebody in a networking event, it's, it's important not just to take the cards um, and put them in your desk. Definitely you need to follow up after an event. When we meet a lot of people at these events, make the effort to, to catch up and touch base again. You know, hey, it's great to meet you. Are you coming to Sunday session? Let's talk before everything gets started. Let's, let's meet for coffee next week. 
let's have a call next week and just talk a little bit more. Hey, can we go out for a couple minutes? Are you going to the after party tonight? Let's sit down and have a beer. Or let's not have a beer and watch everybody else who's having a beer. Right? Um, I use LinkedIn a lot um, because it's, 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 LinkedIn is kind of the Rolodex online. It's your connections, and it's really meant as a platform for sharing uh, contacts. So I, I typically send a lot of LinkedIn invites. When I'm referring someone or putting two people together for an introduction, I try to always use their LinkedIn profile because it immediately shows that person's history and credibility and gives a little bit of esteem to the person that I'm recommending and putting together. So you can learn a little bit more about Michael when you check out his LinkedIn profile at linkedin.com blah blah right? So, do you have a business card? Now, just as a joke, and don't be ashamed, how many of you actually have business cards today? All right. That, 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 no, but that, that, that counts. That counts. You had the intention. Yeah, that's okay. They're in your car. All right. You need, to have your, you need to have your business cards. And I am, like, really dancing on a razor's edge because I've been giving out business cards today, and I don't know that I thought I had enough, but I don't know that I have enough. So business cards are important. If you don't typically use business cards, you can do it. They're not expensive. I would not necessarily recommend going to that one that everybody knows because there are places that are cheaper and much better to get business cards pretty inexpensively, like really inexpensively. And it's an opportunity to set yourself apart and distinguish your business by having a good card. So I'm going to talk about bad business cards. Bad business card is one that has too many fonts and there's too many things going on. You know, unless, like I say, you're a copywriter that does ransom notes, keep the card simple. Keep the card legible, right? Uh, choose a lot of curly, curly swats with curly cues and all that, and make the font really thin so that when it's actually on a card, as opposed to on your screen when you're designing it, you can't read it. That's not a good business card. And, and while you're at it, make the font really tiny because you want your logo to be big. So you have to make the information really small, like the phone number or, or your email address. That's, that's not a good thing for a business card. Some of my favorites are light gray on white cards. You know, I'm getting old, I can't read like I used to, right? So make it light gray on a white card and make the font really small. Thanks for your card, and it gets tossed, right? The other one is laminate the card so no one can, can write on it. You know, you can make a nice card, but only make it glossy on one side. That way they can turn it over and write why they wanted to talk to you on the back. Right? And then use an image that doesn't uh, relate to your business. You know, the dream catcher is always good on a business card. Or, or the howling wolf, when you, when you have nothing to do with a howling wolf or a dream catcher. And then if you're going to use a picture, make sure it's like really tiny so it gets pixelated when you blow it up on, on the card too. Right? In seriousness, there are a couple of tips that you can do to have a good business card. You know, try not to use clip art or the generic templates that come from you know, Staples or Office Depot. You know, the hairdresser one is always that uh, home style hair dryer, or the, the plumber's got the, you know, the pipe wrench that every plumber has. You, know, you can spend a little bit of money. You can actually go to Fiverr uh, if you wanted just to spend 20 bucks and get a logo that's kind of different than everybody else is using. Or you can kind of do it yourself. My logos, I am not an accomplished graphic designer. Typically, it's a font, another font, and I twist it a little bit. But it's something that's clear and legible. Um, it's something that's easy, right? When you do your own business cards, be sure to proof them multiple times. Get somebody else to look at it. Because my first set of cards that I, that I ordered, thankfully, I was ordering smaller quantities then, but I left out my website. You know, you could, kind of, you could kind of figure out what it was because I had my email address on it. So people might just like, well, you know, well, it's Ray at 64 Web, so it's probably 64 Web is the website. But yeah, as a startup small business, I literally had to go through all of those cards without the website on it. So I make sure that the, uh, the information on the cards is correct. Um, they're not that expensive, um, so you can actually, you, know, you can actually remake them, but you've got to wait. And then you have this box of cards that sits on your counter 
Well, what, what happens with mine is anytime I run out of good cards, I pull the old guys without the website address on them and give those out until the, the new ones come in. Right? Um, one other tip, the back of a business card is essentially free. There's no reason to have a business card with, you know, with information just on one side. Right? Or you can you know, think twice before you have a blank card. A blank card on the back is okay because you can write on it, but would it be great if you just spent you know, $3 more or $5 more for that box of cards? Had them print out your services on the back of the card? Have them print out, hey, download our free guide on how to design a logo on the back where they can join your email list. You know, give them some information that actually allows you to make an offer. Uh, I change my cards up every little once in a while, so my current card has services on it. But the card I used for a number of years was, I have a downloadable document about the 10 things you need to think about when you're going through a website project. If I gave someone my card, I never gave the card with my name up. I always gave it to them with the offer up. So they'd see that and then turn the card over and see my name. But it allowed them to join the list. And it allowed them to get some information that might push them in my direction. Because I'm trying to show that I'm giving stuff away that's credible and kind of helps them make the decision. So there's an opportunity really to use your business card as a billboard. So think twice about leaving the backside blank. So. I'll ask you again, can I have your card? I'm Ray Mitchell. You can connect with me here. Definitely, uh, I like to connect. Uh, send me a LinkedIn invite. I'm Ray Mund with a U. My mother did that to me. Um, but you can look for me online. Um, pretty, pretty frequently active on uh, Twitter, and I'm trying to dip my toe in the Instagram thing. So thank you. Any questions? Yes. Um, how do you feel about um, not just getting all of the information getting business cards and, okay, let's trade phone numbers about it just depends on who you're talking to. That might work well here. Um, but I can give you a whole lot of reasons why not. People are afraid to use Facebook. As a person in my personal life, I don't text because texts are like hand grenades. People send you a request by text, turn away, and then you're expected to respond to it. So I don't text. If I delete the text with your information, it's gone. It's probably better to take a photo of the card if you've got it or send them, send them a text or the VCF file with your contact information. But have the card. People can see it in, uh, what is the movie? American Psycho. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, has anyone seen American Psycho, the first one? They go into this, like, I don't know, 20-minute scene where they're, like, comparing business cards because that was, like, a big thing. It's like, what kind of paper and what font is it? Oh, it's a specially custom-designed font. And that provided a little bit of status and notoriety. Your card has the ability to do that more than an email or a Facebook message when you're not connected to them already, because it doesn't go into their inbox. It goes into the, someone sent you a message that you don't know inbox, that most people don't even know they have. Right. Michael. You uh, mentioned you wanted to be a component of DNI. Um, but you also mentioned you at Rotary have been in a lot of networking groups, so I'm told. Um, I, I, I feel you. Um, the most success I've had is with my local chamber of commerce. I live in Winston-Salem, uh, and I don't belong to the Winston-Salem chamber. I actually belong to the Clemens chamber, which is the bedroom community next to it. Uh, just by virtue of that's the one I joined, and that's the one I got business and traction from. Um, and you can, but it's also the one that I spent the most time with, going to the meetings, meeting people, building a relationship. So we are just as much friends now as we are business colleagues. Um, and people see my work. And people see that I come to the meeting every morning at 8.45 on Wednesday. And he's reputable. And he contributes to the group. And he's consistent. So people give me referrals because they know that I will do the work. And there are, 
willing to hire me themselves, but also, more importantly, recommend me to their customers. Because recommending someone to a customer is a big deal. If this person falls short on whatever you recommended them for, it doesn't make you look better in your client's eyes. It makes you look worse. So I take those referrals seriously and work to cultivate that. So that, that's the power of networking. Because if so, uh, by that same token, I've had jobs where, and particularly it's kind of odd in the web design business, but I had a client literally tell me, I don't need a contract. I don't need any information. Mark said I should work with you. Just do this. And it's like, well, I got to give you something because I don't work without a contract. But little, he was sold because someone else gave me the, you know, told him to do business with me. So that, that's the power of the, the network and, and working together in that way. Yes? Have you ever experienced this where you get a card from someone where they have their website, but then their email address is some sort of, you know, public? Yes, and I, I love those because it's a marketing opportunity, right? Mm -hmm. um, because if they don't have the business address, match, uh, uh, the email address that matches the business, it's an opportunity, one, it, it means the person who built their website didn't sell them email, right? So what else didn't that person do to help this person in business? And my favorite is, A, when Time Warner merges with Spectrum, what's gonna happen to your email address? Is that Roadrunner thing gonna go away that everybody has? Or you know, are you really a reputable company as a financial advisor or a firm when your address is AOL.com? And you have that conversation with people and they realize that it's an opportunity. And email is an easy way to get in the door for other services. I, how do you address that politely though? I mean, I know you didn't say to the financial advisor, hey. Uh, I don't. I'm pretty out there with it. Okay. Because, uh, you know, it's, it's a logical thing. And I'm not, I'm not overtly harsh. But I said, hey, why aren't you using branded email for your domain. Or, you know, this is a way of professionalizing your, cost, your business and letting people know that you're going to be here for the long term. You spent the money to do that versus, you know, I am the best, I am the best whatever at gmail.com. Right. Any other questions? Yeah. Uh, oh, well, let me ask you a question. What is your name? Adam. Adam, I'm Ray. <laughs> What's the question, Adam? No, uh, no, 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 because I'm cheap when I'm in an Uber. That's the first thing. But literally, it's not, this networking is not necessarily a strategy to gain business. If at the end of the conversation, while you're in the car for 20 minutes, they ask for your card, great. I've had plenty of, oppor <laughs> I've had plenty of opportunities to pass and connect drivers who are looking for work with people in their industry. So I'm, you know, I may get business out of it. If I take 100 rides, maybe I'll get some business out of it. But if I can meet 100 people and have a good conversation with 75 of them and maybe help five of them, as opposed to doing nothing and just listening to the radio and the Uber, probably a better thing to do. Right. Yes? Where do you buy your business cards from? Are we still recording? <laughs> you can tell me later. I can tell you later. Okay. Yeah, but there are places you can get them online. You design them yourself. Uh, from a pricing perspective, 2,000 double sides, glossy on one side for, I think, 60 bucks, where the big box stores is like 500 for 65 bucks. Yeah. Well, can I ask you a substitute question? Sure. <laughs> How did you come up with 64 web design? Uh, the name. Yeah. I was born in 1964. Uh, there are some Bible verses that are chapter 6, verse 4, that were very meaningful to me. Um, I left my last employer under good circumstances. I left, but I was a little bitter about the weight finally actually did go down um, because they replaced me with somebody who was definitely underqualified um, but wouldn't keep me on. I was actually living in Canada at the time, and I had to come back to the U.S. They wouldn't extend my stay in Canada, but they hired somebody who was was not the right person in my mind. Um, so I had a little bit of bitterness, but there was this Bible verse that essentially said, pay attention to your own stuff, do it well, and you'll get your reward in the end. 
And that was a principle that, that I kind of stood for. And the 6.4 was pretty easy, and it's web design, so 6.4 web. And that's where it came from. Okay. Yes? Um, I will try a lot of different types of networking, but I'm consistent. And networking is like, you know, as I said, Chris said, networking is the work. I have networking meetings in my calendar. They're inviolable because it is like going to work. You need to attend regularly. Um, so find the ones that work for you. Find the one that you're, you can get in. Sometimes there, there may be a, another designer or a developer or another marketing person in the group, so you can't belong. So you've got to find one that you can be in and work with and contribute. Yes? As somebody who's not really familiar with the networking you know, ways to get started on that, where would you start to look? A lot of times the business section of your paper will have uh, networking calendars. Um, you can check the Chamber of Commerce. Uh, you can check, in North Carolina, we've actually got good community college system. If you go to the small business center at the community college, in North Carolina, the, the state is paying for you as a business person to get education and training. They can actually refer you to different uh, networking groups in the area, and they may actually conduct some on site. So that's a good way to get started. And then as you're out in the community, ask, where are you from? Goldsboro. When you get back to the Goldsboro, what do you do? Uh, I actually started my own small business, making websites for small businesses to help slow business growth. Yeah. Find uh, another person who does similar work and ask them where are some good places to meet people. There's enough work for everyone. You don't necessarily want to be in the same group, but they can give you what's going on in Goldsboro. Right? Yes? All right, so this is a piggyback question. Uh, so if we were to find somebody whose business card did not match up, they didn't have a brand new email to go with their website, how could we, by example, build that relationship and point out that there's a problem? All right. So. I like WordCamp because if you follow me when I speak at WordCamp, you get stuff that I charge my clients for, right? So the easy peasy way to give somebody branded email is to go to G Suite by Google. It's, it's five, do, it's five dollars uh, an address, uh, five dollars per month per user, but it's branded. But you have the conversation. So literally my process is, Oh, it doesn't match? Let me immediately go to the website and see what the copyright date is on the website. If the copyright date is not current, that means they don't have somebody who's paying attention to it. And then you can go in, hey, um, I'm a local web designer. I see, I got your card, we met. Um, are you interested in potentially getting branded email for your company? You know, that way, you know, when your clients, when you give a card, your clients see that, hey, you know, this guy's a professional, it matches. Because one of the things is that, you know, because, you know, if, and particularly anybody for me, the signal is if they're using the cable company's uh, email, the cable companies are always merging. They're changing the services. They'll change the, the domain on the email when it suits them and doesn't suit you. But you'll lose that. But if you had your own email branded to your domain, you control that, and it actually helps your business. Is that something you'd like to talk about? And by the way, when was the last time somebody looked at your website? We can talk about that as well. Thank you. Okay. If there are any more questions? If there are no questions, thank you. See you at Donuts and Networking in the morning if you're not going to be at the beer garden tonight. And hopefully we can strike up a conversation. Okay.